Good morning. I'm Harriet Michelle, the president of the National Minority Supplier Development Council. Our distinguished speaker deserves your full attention. Craig Clayton is one of the most sought after speakers on the topic of diversity in business. He is the director and diversity strategist for the International Institute for Diversity and Cross Cultural Management. His global outreach spans 14 countries, including Brazil, China, the Dominican Republic, Indonesia, Jamaica, and Mexico. We're pleased to have him with us this morning and share his experience and insight. Ladies and gentlemen, give a great NMSDC welcome to Mr. Clegg Creighton, Sr. The context of what I'd like to share with you is entitled Moving Supplier Diversity Beyond Compliance to value creation. And at its core, with the economy like it is, and organizations struggling to find ways to get the most out of every asset they have, many of us are now faced with how do we ensure that we're developing strategic alliances? I am very pleased to have had the opportunity to share some of this information previously at both the Heart of Illinois Trade Fair with Dr. Rose, who has given me my claim to fame that my son will always be able to recall because I've thrown it at him nine or ten times. It just so happened that at the event I spoke at, Barack Obama was to have been the keynote but canceled, so I can tell my grandchildren I got a chance to fill in for Barack Obama. <laughs> As I was preparing to come, though, to share this information with you, I was thinking about a client that I have in Louisiana, a gentleman named Louis Thibodeau. Louis is one of those people that my grandmother likes to say has more money than he does sense. We just call him eccentric when we're in his presence. Louis had sent an invitation out to a housewarming party after his house was rebuilt after Katrina. This is a 15,000 square foot home, and we got the invitation. I glanced at it and tossed it to the side. Well, my beautiful bride of the last 20 years took a look at it and she said, whose house is this? I said, it's that guy Thibodeau I was telling you about in Louisiana. She said, well, when's the house warming? I said, sweetheart, that's in Louisiana. We're not going from Houston to Louisiana for a house warming party. She said, well, who else do you know with a 15,000 square foot home? I said, nobody. She said, well, we're going because I want to see the house. <laughs> now, I can't speak for your family, but in my house, we went. We got there and they had a Zydeco band out back playing this gorgeous Olympic-sized swimming pool and it looked like two people were swimming. So I turned to my wife and I said, sweetheart, I've never been to a housewarming party where people swim before. She said, you're in Cajun country. You don't know what they do here. Let's go get a glass of wine and go out by the pool. I said, yes, ma'am, and got my glass of wine and went out by the pool. Then I realized just how eccentric this man was because these were not two people swimming in his pool. He had two live alligators in his pool. And let me clarify, I don't mean alligators, I mean alligators. So obviously everybody wanted to know, had he lost his mind? I asked one of the guys with the trays and the little foo-foo stuff on it, I said, where is Lewis at? They said, well, he and his wife are going to be coming down the spiral staircase in just a moment. And sure enough, they did. He stopped about halfway down and he said, uh, first of all, thank you for being here. But let me just share something with you, because I don't want to answer this question all night. He said, no, the gators did not sneak in my pool. I put them there. And it cost me a ton of money to keep the water equalized, not to mention the land out back. But let me explain to you why I have the gators in my pool. Anyone who showed up and was brave enough to jump in one end and could make it to the other, I give them anything they want. Land, house, money, business, you name it. We chuckled and started to head inside to go eat and heard a splash. <laughs> one of the guests was in the pool. And as he's stroking across the pool, and I'm going to age myself because I see a few younger faces here, I grew up watching Tarzan as a kid. And when Tarzan swam, he kicked so hard it was like foam in the water behind him. That's what it looked like behind old boy in the pool. Now he's about three-fourths of the way across and the gator surfaces up right behind him. When the gator flipped its tail, the distance between man and gator was gone, just like that. The guy's about three-fourths of the way through and he's reaching for the wall. The gator starts to open up. As the gator lunges towards him, the man grabs the wall and comes flying up out of the water. The gator snaps and just misses him. We're screaming and cheering, and Lewis runs over, and he puts his arms around Bob, and he said, listen, I'm a man of my word, but I never thought anybody would take me up on my offer. Whatever you'd like is yours, land, house, business, money, you name it. Bob shook the water out of his hair. He said, Lewis, listen, I really appreciate your offer.